Hi all, and welcome to the 13th lecture on Austrian School of Economics. The topic of today is one of the most important uh, in the whole Austrian Economic School, and maybe is also even the most important among all the lectures, and because the topic is time preference, a topic that we already discussed slightly in other lectures, and we will discuss in deep in this one. The book that we take a reference is always uh, Principles of, of Economics of Safedin Amos. This lecture will be longer than the others because uh, there are many concepts that we should discuss about and uh, we cannot, uh, that cannot be skipped, so it will be longer than the others. So take a seat uh, because it will be longer, but it will be many, there will be many interesting aspects. Let's start uh, with uh, a quotation, this time from Hans Hermann Hoff, and we already discussed about this uh, in other uh, lecture, but today will be uh, the first quotation. No matter what a person's original time preference rate or what the original distribution of such, such rates within a given population, once it is low enough to allow for any savings and capital or durable consumer, consumer goods formation at all, a tendency toward a fall in the rate of time preference is set in motion, accompanied by the process of civilization. Austrian School of Economics offer a coherent explanation of the emergence of money on the free market and the devastating, devastating consequence of subjective this enormously important technology to government monopoly control. It is possible for money to exist without the state. This was we discussed also in the lecture on money. And it is possible for the topic of money to be studied without resorting the monetary central planners. In order to explain money as a market phenomenon, the first topic to deeply understand is the time preference. As I highlighted many times, the starting point of economics is the scarcity of time and each man has to economize his time. Time is not a normal commodity for which men can choose the quantity he would prefer. There is no market choice between different quantities of time and time cannot be traded directly. The way an individual values time is subjective and variable, but some regularities exist. For example, the near the period of time to the present, the more valuable it will appear, because the present is certain and it is already here, but the future is always uncertain as it may never come. The higher valuation of present goods is a permanent fixture of human actions, so that humans, humans choose to consume rather than to accumulate more of the goods they value, including money, confirm this preference. Their choice to consume in the present in the present implies that they place a higher valuation on a present good um, than the same good in the future. Time preference is the degree to which present goods are preferred over future goods. It is always positive because humans always prefer present goods over future goods, as we said, but its magnitude varies from person to person. And this is um, very important. So it's always positive, but this magnitude varies from person to person and for each person across his life according to uh, his situation. A high time preference indicate a heavy discounting of the future in favor of the present and greater present orientation, while a low time preference implies a lower discounting of the future and a greater future orientation. Many factors influence the time preference, external, biological, social and institutional factors. The most important among the institutional and social factors is private property. And we had already one full lecture on uh, property and the importance of pri private property, seeing uh, as uh, a prerequisite for civilization, which will provide men with a very effective way, private property, of providing for his future. As a concept of property rights becomes widely accepted in a society, it leads to a widespread decline in time preference as individuals begin to increase the valuation of the increasingly secure future. And now we discuss about the connection between time preference and money. So, as we said, the future is unknown and uncertain, and no individual can know for sure what goods they will require in the future. In the same way money solves the problem of coincidence of wants in trade, it solves it also for future provision. By saving money, 
the most liquid good and generalized medium of exchange, the saver is able to exchange it in the future for the most valuable goods available and to do so at the time of their choosing. As a human society develops money as a good, humans find it very convenient and powerful tool for transferring value into the future. And this allows them to lower their time preference and to engage in more savings and future provision. Money that is easy to produce will, uh, will likely experience substantial increase in its supply and a reduction in the economic value held it over the long term. Hard money or money that instead hard money or money that are difficult to produce in increasing quantities in response to demand increasing in response to, in response to demand increases are likely to witness their supply expand to a limited extent which causes price to rise to meet increasing demand making them better at preserving value those who store their wealth in the harder monies witness the preservation and appreciation of their wealth, while those who store an easy money witness its dissipation. And this we already, their concept already discussed in the lecture of money. They may learn these lessons um, before it is too late, moving their wealth to the harder money, or they may not. In both cases, the end result is the same. The majority of wealth, of wealth uh, will accrue to the hardest money. This process, in fact, explains the demonetization of seashells, glass beads, iron, copper and silver all over the world. It also explains the demonetization of silver in the 19th centuries and the precipitous decline in its value compared to gold. The undisputed, undisputed winner of the global market for money at the end of the 19th century. As the vast majority of the planet converged on one commodity which had um, the reliable lowest annual supply growth rate, secure savings into the future became ubiquitous, encouraging people around the world to save for the futures, thus lowering the time preference. And this was the time between 1870 and 1914. This made plenty of savings available for capital investment, increased labor productivity, incentivized investment in technological innovation and increased prosperity. For any society and, and at all times, the hardness of monetary technologies available to people is inextricably, inextricably connected to time preference for good or for ill. So this, uh, the last less, le, le, sentence is very important. So for any society and at all times, the hardness of monetary technology available to people is inextricably connected to time preference. And time preference is connected to civilization. <coughs> now we move to uh, time preference and savings. And this will be also an important and also not a short part, a long part, but it's uh, very important. So money is always used in one of three ways. It is exchanged for consumer goods, save it in a cash balance, or exchange for capital goods, which means it is invested in production process of other goods in the hope it will uh, generate a return higher than holding a cash balance. The important distinction between savings and investment has been largely lost in modern economics, where the two terms can be used inter changeably uh, um, at times. For the Keynesians, saving and investing are levers that government policy dictates, completely separate from any notion of opportunity cost. The distinction between saving and investment lies in the salability and risk in each category. Saving specifically refers to accumulating money in cash balances with the rationale behind of holding cash to edge against future uncertainty. Cash, al uh, cash allows its holders to protect themselves against unexpected negative economic shocks and to take advantage of positive economic opportunities. Uh, for example, a good rule of investing is always to keep between three and six months of, sav of salaries as a savings. So if something bad happens, um, you don't have to go and take out your investment, but you can take your savings. Should this money um, tied up in other investment, in fact, he may not um, be able um, to, to take it, um, uh, not be able to take it. Money is acquired for one property only, its marketability or salability. The ease, so they also um, defi defined as the ease with which it can be sold 
without a significant loss in its value. Cash sellability is helped by its widespread use, its divisibility, durability, transportability, and the expectation that it can resist inflation in the future. Cash savings are held not to chase a return on investment, but for the liquidity and low risk of reduction in their value. Unlike savings, inter investing necessitates relinquishing control of your capital so that it can be employed in production. You give up on the sellability and reliability of having a cash balance in order to employ the capital in a production process, hoping it will generate profit. So the investor sacrifices liquidity of cash and takes the risk of loss in exchange for a return of investing. There is no investment without risk and there is always the risk of partial or complete loss of capital. Time preference can be understood as the driver of saving and investment. This is also another very important statement. So time preference is inextricably linked to hardness of money and can also be understood as the driver of saving and investment. Once an individual can lower this time preference to engage in activities that no, no, do not offer intermediate re immediate rewards, they can choose present time in exchange for the future. Once they decide to forego consumption of present goods in order to save them for the future, they are lowering their time preference further. Conceptually and chronologically, saving can only be understood as the precursors and the prerequisite of investment. Before one can invest capital, uh, one must first defer its consume and consumption by saving it. Uh, one does not need to choose between savings and investment in the absolute. The choice between the two is decided at the margin and it depends on the quantity of each uh, already held. Young people with little wealth will likely prefer to secure some cash balance free from risk before they can take risk in capital markets. Those who on the other side, those who accumulate significant savings are more likely to invest in capital markets. As a man starts accumulating his cash, cash balance from zero, the marginal utility of a holding cash is very high. Therefore, the utility of a cash balance is likely larger than an investment. As he accumulates larger cash, cash balance, balances, the marginal utility of adding those balances declines until it drops below the spectral return of the best in inver investment opportunity available to him. The more cash the man has, has the more he is able to withstand the, the riskiness of the investment. A bad investment will not ruin him because he will, have, he will still have his, his cash balance. The lowering the time preference is what drives individuals to accumulate cash balances and to invest. The lower the time preference, the less they consume and, they, and the resources they will have to save and invest. Under a hard money standard, such as gold, the hard money itself will be held as savings. In modern, modern easy money economy, cash, cash is trash and people instead hold the equivalent of their savings in government bonds and or low risk investment stocks and take more risk with the rest of the portfolio. Savings and, saving and investment are not competitors. Investment follow savings. This is what we have just learned. Both are driven by and must be pre precede um, by a lowering uh, of time preference and a delaying of gratification. When money is expected to appreciate, people are more likely to defer con consumption to save in hard money. When saving increases, the possibility of investing increases. When cash balance can be held with confidence in their value, individuals have the freedom to take on more risk with their investment in a world of hard money. The, the, in fact, the only investment that will make uh, sense will be the ones that offer positive real rate of returns, unlike the scenario under easy money, where investments that offer positive nominal returns can be undertaken, leading to capital destruction in real terms because of inflation. In fact, inflation does not promote investment, but it only misallocates it. Keynesians think that a surplus of savings over investments result in unemployment and recession. In reality, investment follows savings and tend to rise as a saving, uh, savings rise. The choice to allocate between consumption, savings and investment is faced at the margin and is shaped by time preference. As time preference declines, economic resources shift from consumption to savings. As savings increase, the marginal valuation 
placed on added units of savings declines, making investment risk more tolerable. <coughs> the more time preference declines, the more likely individuals are to defer consumption and the more cash uh, they will have on hand, the more they will link to investor to lend. The abundance of loanable uh, funds allow the for the financing of the increasing number of productive enterprises at progressively low interest rate. As more capital is available, productivity of labor increases, and with it, income and living standards. The increase in income, in turn, allow for more capital accumulation in a virtuous cycle of improving material well-being. And this is the process of civilization. So this part is really, it's really important to understand the whole Austrian school of economics and why Austrian school think that uh, money should not be increased by government decree. Every time there is inflation, so, so um, increase of supply is not generate more con more uh, invest it's not generate more wealth but it is a more investment but it is allocates investment and now we move to the last part uh, of the video discussing about the time preference and civilization so as individuals lower time preference and accumulate more capital, as we have seen before, their productivity increase and as a result, they are incentivized to lower their time preference further. In the history of interest rates, Homer and Silla show a 5,000 year process of decline of interest rates. In intervened with significant increase during period of war, this disease and catastrophe. The more towards harder money with better salability across space and time can be viewed, the move, sorry, the move toward the harder money, monies with better salability across space and time can be viewed as a contributor to the epochal decline in time preference by allowing humans better savings technology, making the future less uncertain for them and thus making them, uh, making them discount it less. The result is... Um, more saving uh, and thus more capital available at lower interest. <coughs> this process can be interrupted by various factors, not natural or man-made. Violations of property rights are the most important social and institution fact uh, factors fa uh, affecting the time preference. Other than others are theft, vandalism and other forms of crime. And the devaluation of the currency is one violation of property rights. Having money allows men to delay consumption in a, to delay consumption in exchange for something that can hold value well and be exchanged easily. Without money money, delaying consumption and saving will be more difficult because the goods could lose their value over time. With the gold standard at the, the end of the 19th century, the majority of the world had access to a form of money that could hold its value well into the future, while also being increasingly easy to transfer across space. But the 20th century's shift to an easier monetary medium has reversed the millennia-old process of progressing lower time preference. We had in the last century, in fact, government currencies growing at 6-7% per year, in the best currency, government currency, and instead of 1.52% of gold, especially during the period from 1960 to 2014, the average currency supply increase, increase considering the average weighted size of each currency was 14%. Fiat money brought us to more prim primitive times, making it more difficult in providing for the future. For the weakest, weakest currencies, easy money uh, meant hyperinflation, 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 as we have seen in Zimbabwe, Lebanon or Venezuela. People cannot think anymore for the future and focus on the short-term uh, quest for survival and crime and violence becomes more com common. The most immediate uh, effect of the decline in the ability of money to maintain its value over time is an increase in consumption and reduction of savings. Deferring consumption and delaying gratification require one to give up immediate pleasure in exchange for the future reward. The less re reliable the medium of exchange is for transforming value into future reward, 
the lower the expected value for future reward, the more expensive the initial, the initial sacrifice becomes, and the less likely people are to defer consumption. The culture of conspicuous mass consumption that pervades our planet today cannot be understood except through the distorted incentives fiat money creates around consumption. With the money constantly losing its value, deferring consumption and saving will likely have a negative expected value. This pushed unsavvy savers to consider investing in securities. But finding the right investment is difficult, requires uh, requires active management and supervision and entails risk. So the path uh, of least resistance, so the path permitting the entire culture of fiat society is to consume all your income, living from paycheck to paycheck. Another way to understand the destructive impact um, of inflation on capital accumulation is that the threat of inflation encourages savers to invest in anything they expect will offer a better return than holding cash. In other words, inflations, the inflation uh, decreases their perceived value of discernment. When cash holds its value and appreciates, an acceptable investment will return a positive nominal return, which all, will also be a positive real return. Potential investor, investors can be discerning, hold on on their cash, while they wait to find a better opportunity to invest, to invest in the future. But when money is losing its value, savers have a strong impetus to avoid the devaluation of savings by investing, and so they become frantic to preserve their wealth. They are less discriminating, and if, uh, so investment that offer a positive nominal return could nonetheless yield a neg negative real return, depending on inflation. Business activities that destroy economic value and consume capital appear economically economical when measured against the debasing monetary unit and can continue to subsist, find investor and destroy capital. The destruction of wealth in savings does not magically create more productive opportunities in society as Keynesians want to believe. It reallocates that wealth into destructive and failed business opportunities. <coughs> this is a negative sum game. The value lost to inflation to finance governance spending cannot be acquired back by all the victims of inflation. Only a fraction, fraction will be able to invest and beat inflation, but the financial industry, with its monopoly central banking privileges, can be relied upon to come out on top. And now will be the last paragraph. Uh, with increased time preference, also trade, social cooperation, and the ability of humans to live close to each other deteriorates. But religious, civic, and social norms all uh, encourage people to moderate their immediate Im impulse to exchange for the long-term benefits of living in a society, cooperating with others, and enjoying the benefits of the division of labor of specialization. With these, uh, uh, these long-term benefits uh, seem far away, the incentive to sacrifice them uh, the, to sacrifice for them becomes weaker, and we think more in the short term. And now, considering also it was a long um, video, I make it here the key points that for me are the following six. First, time preference is the degree to which present goods are preferred over future goods. It is always positive, but its magnitude varies. Those who store their wealth in the harder monies witness the preservation and appreciation of their wealth, while those who store in it in easy money witness its discipline. Dissipation. Time preference can be understood as the driver of savings, saving and investment. They are not competitors, both are driven by a lowering of time preference. Um, the most immedi immediate effect of the decline in the ability of money to maintain its value over time is an increase in consumption and a reduction in savings. A tendency toward a fail in the rate of time preference is set in motion uh, once it's set in motion, is accompanied by the process of civilization. And with that, I say you goodbye and see you in one, in one of the next videos. Bye.